so we are back guys and I have saved the best and the worst for last this is the British Challenger armored troop five vehicles for the World War 3 team Yankee game one 100 scale these are by Battlefront Miniatures. So, again, we are going to follow pretty much the same build options. There are two different side skirts. Uh, and uh, I want to call these side compartments. Depending on whether you build what's called the Challenger or the Challenger Romor. Which I'm not sure what difference that makes in game. Because everything, the gun, the armor, and all the rest of that is the same. So I'm not sure. Maybe these are different skirts. Uh, and so you're going to get these options, but don't let that confuse you. Uh, you're going to get the haul, the tracks, the hatch. You will have an option here of the uh, barrels that go on here. But I think they're pretty straightforward. I don't think they're like the other ones I was working on that I got upside down and then again maybe these were the ones that were upside down so again remember what I told you in the video which I think was about the T-80s to be careful with these because these might have been the ones that I was putting on upside down you're gonna get the upper haul this little attachment that goes on there now one of the first things I will tell you that is wrong about this diagram is they seem to indicate that these side skirts can be attached to the tracks and they cannot these side skirts must be attached to this upper hall there's some nooks or some hooks right under here so you're going to kind of attach them and you're going to want to let that dry they cannot there's nowhere to attach them to these tracks so that is the first thing wrong with this kit of many things that i ran into uh, but it's not the most serious thing which I'm going to tell you about because you could have a lot of problems if you miss this like I did. Uh, you're going to do the upper haul to the lower haul. And I will say in general these lower hauls pop right up into the top and you don't even need glue. A few of them I think I did glue uh, just because I wasn't sure if it would come apart when I was lifting it off of the uh, tank, lifting the haul off. But most of them, I never glued in. I just popped them right in there snugly. Uh, and then so you have these options. Again, you have to open a closed hatch. And then, of course, as I explained, the different compartments depending on which one you're planning to build. Let's take a look at the actual tanks. Okay, so here are the actual assembled plastic models. Before we get into those, I will show you the card. So this is the card for the Challenger. I'm not sure if they have one for the Romor or not. Uh, front, oh, the bottom, the Romor actually has better armor. Yeah, it has better armor in the front and in the side. So I would definitely pay attention to that if you're planning on building these. Uh, you can see the guns. Um... Not sure how much the point difference is for the Romor. It doesn't, I don't see that. Oh, here it is. Three Challenger Romors are 39 points. Three Challengers are 33. So you have Brutal, Shobom Armor, Laser Right, Rangefinder, Smoke, Stabilizers, and Thermal Imaging. The Royal Hussars. So I would, you know, make a note of that. If you plan on using these. Now, I will explain what I meant when I said these were the best and the worst tanks to build. They were the best tanks because I think they look the best. I mean, these things look sci-fi. Look like something straight out of the future. And you can see, I did mix up a few of the options because, like I said, I'm not using these for Team Yankee, at least unless I play by myself or a friendly game. So this one, I have the Challenger compartment on. Because I kind of like the look of that. But this one I have the uh, Romor compartment on. Uh, all of them have the Romor side skirts. I kind of decided that before I built them. That I was going to use the Romor side skirts. Now let's take a look at the actual model. 
as far as uh, what it looks like on the top and the bottom and things. So that is the top of the model. Very detailed. The side. The rear. The other side. The front. And the top. So let's see, we're gonna see if we can move this just a little, okay. Now I'm gonna discuss in a little bit of detail some of the things to look out for this on this kit. Uh, let me see. So I don't think this is the one where these where I put these in upside down. I think that was the T80s if I remember correctly these look like they go in pretty easily what you're going to have a problem with though is these side skirts are very difficult to get in there first of all so you're going to have to line these up dry fit them and then kind of remember where they're at there's actually a little nook or notch on the end of the front of these that should be underneath the hall and that's going to be a little bit difficult so like on some of these I was not able to get that under there and you can see the difference so on this one for example you can see where I didn't get that under there and you have a lot more of a a lot more of a uh, opening or a bridge under there but typically if you can get that notch under there it will it will help with lining it up all the way across the length of the tank the other problem i had with these which was odd was for some reason these track sorry about that guys the video cut off on me all i was gonna say though was when you uh glue the tracks to the body you may want to get a clip or something to hold them in place because unlike the other ones these did tend to pop off or come apart right here at the bottom i don't know why i don't know if it's because it was heavier or the slots weren't as thick or whatever but uh, i did have to clamp a few of these down so that was the uh one of the main things i wanted to point out with regards to the track uh the most important thing I want to indicate though is with regards to the turret and I don't know if I said this or not before the video cut off but when you put this turret in there there is a small little clamp area that you want to make sure you do not cut off or you do not uh, get rid of and it's basically shaped like this and that is going to need to slot into a groove in here and so this does not go on the top of the turret like that it does not lay down like that it goes in like that because uh, I had one that I messed up and then I actually cut this off because I thought it was in the way of my fit and instead I realized later that that has to slot in there and that's very important otherwise your uh, your turrets are going to not go on and you're going to have to uh, ad hoc find a way to keep them in place so but overall I think this is probably the best looking of the tanks that I've built so far and uh, you know you just gotta be patient with it and pay attention to what you're doing take care God bless